What's up guys, welcome to G Whiskey, my name is Jeff. Now this is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey, and if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, why don't we jump into our review. Today we're looking at the Anok 18 year old. Stick around. So it's an Anok today. This will be my first review of an Anok whiskey on this channel. Anok is a Highland whiskey, and it means the hill in Gaelic, if you care. Um, it's produced at the Knock Dew Distillery, which is owned by Inverhouse. Inverhouse also owns Ball Blair and Old Pulteney, both of which have been rebranded over the last few years, and as you'd expect, after the rebranding, uh, the new line came out with more premium price tags. Now, so far, it seems like they've left a knock alone, and yeah, I mean, we'll see if that lasts. Now, I know a lot of you out there are big fans of a knock, and personally speaking, I've never been a huge fan of the brand, although I do think they're interesting. I think they have a very bright and clean distillate, not only that, I always find some interesting spices, maybe like exotic Indian style spices worked into their flavor profile. So it does get points for being unique, and aside from their entry level 12 year old, they usually give us good specs as well. Uh, but it's not a whiskey that I've ever really fallen in love with. I'm always happy to drink it, but it's never given me that moment. And you guys know what I mean. Uh, that moment when you're drinking a whiskey and you find something special in there and you say, that's it, I love this stuff, I need to explore more from this brand. Um, yeah, that's never happened to me so far with a knock. I've had plenty of their expressions over the years, and I can't say I've ever really been hooked by them. Oppositely, they're usually of a certain quality, but yeah, just so far, no magic moment. So for me, this has always been relegated to one of those whiskeys that, you know, I thought was solid and I thought was interesting. I could totally see why a lot of the people around me were really into this stuff. I have a lot of friends who thoroughly enjoy a knock, but I was never completely enamored with it. I liked it, but that's pretty much where it ended. Anyway, we're looking at the 18 today. It's among the oldest members of a Knox core range, although they do have a 24 year old out there. Um, this is, I believe, matured in second fill bourbon barrels and second fill Oloroso barrels. Uh, don't hold me to that. Either way, it's definitely a whiskey with a sherry touch and I like me some sherry. So why don't we hop into a review of this one, see what our whiskey is all about. And in the meantime, if you can kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. So a knock is not always consistent with specs, but for the most part, they do a good job. Our ABV on this one comes in at 46%. It's gonna be non-chill filtered, and our color here is natural, so looking good. Nice natural color to our whiskey here. We definitely got some darkness from those sherry casts. Uh, presentation is fantastic. I really like this bottle. I think it's modern, it's clean, it's stylish. We have a minimalist label, we have some nice purple accents, and we have some very clean graphics. So yeah, I like it a lot. I think presentation score here is gonna be a five out of five. We've also got some great info, non-chill filter, natural color, front and center on the label. We've got our nice shiny purple age statement here. We've got some tasting notes on the back. It's everything we need, nothing we don't. It's a great combination of minimalism and stylishness. I love it. Let's try our nose. Sherry, caramel, uh, candied apple. We've got oak, we've got toffee, we've got black tea in here. Orange zest, uh, white pepper, tea biscuits, vanilla, malt. We've got some sea air in here and some gentle leather. Complex. Now the palate. Mm. Uh, definitely get the knockhouse style in this one. You have some light vanillas, some honey, some of those exotic spices, maybe cumin or mustard. We have some sea air in here, and we have some sherry touches as well. We've got dates, raisins, earth, some black tea in here. Uh, there's ginger, cinnamon, nutmeg, and more of that leather. Now the finish. Mm. Okay, so we're moving into a more uh, earthy and almost bitter set of flavors in here. We've got more of that black tea. We have a touch of ginseng. We have some autumn leaves. We have some mocha. Uh, more of those dates and those dark sherry notes. Uh, this is a short to medium finish. What an interesting whiskey this is. It's not the kind of whiskey that you can just taste and figure out. Um, if you guys have been watching my channel for a while, you know I don't do first impression videos where I just kind of pop it and talk about it right away. Uh, I don't even review bottles that are near the top. I like to get that level down a little bit, spend some time with the whiskey, get to know it before I start discussing it. 
Now, occasionally that's not necessary and your whiskey is a totally consistent experience from start to finish, but that's definitely the exception and not the rule. For the most part, your whiskey is gonna need time to sort of open up and interact with the air. Not only that, um, obviously I'm taking the time to sort of familiarize myself with the character of the whiskey. I might come back to it, you know, before eating, after eating, in a different mood, at a different time of day. There's a lot of different factors here. And usually taking that extra time is good enough for you to get a general idea about what it is that you're drinking. You know, you identify the house style as well as the sets of flavors that make a particular expression unique. But sometimes, even after all that effort, spending extra time with the whiskey, really trying to get to know it, you're still left scratching your head. And I'm not gonna lie, that's pretty much what's happened here. I've come back to this whiskey quite a bit and almost every time it's something different. Now I will give it this much, the set of flavors we get in this whiskey are consistent, but the intensity, the balance and just the general vibe I get from this whiskey are still kind of hard to pinpoint. But at least our core set of flavors are consistent though there every time I come back to this whiskey, this is a sherry forward whiskey, which of course I love. Not only that, we've got the Enoch House style. It shines through here. So we have our layer of sherry. We have that distinctive house style. They always come together in an interesting way. So this is a dynamic whiskey. But there are some shortcomings here despite the fact that I really love the flavors. First and foremost is the intensity which I find really odd because this comes in at 46% ABV, which is known to be the sort of craft standard. But when I have this in side by side with other whiskeys, oftentimes whiskeys with similar or the same ABV, this often comes off a little bit light. Not only that, there's often a problem with balance here. It tends to have some inconsistent balance, which again, very strange. Sometimes it's very balanced. It's a very harmonious whiskey. Uh, the flavors mingle well. It's well structured. Everything's in its right place. Other times, I don't get that. I get the wonderful flavors, but they're less cohesive. You know, I always get that rich sherry, the age, the sophistication, the exotic spices, the coastal elements, the bright elements. There's a lot of cool stuff in here, but sometimes they don't all mesh perfectly. Regardless, I still think this is an excellent whiskey. Like I said, there are days where it works, and on the days that it doesn't work, I still think all of those independent elements are that good. So yeah, it does leave me scratching my head. I'm not always sure what to think of this stuff, but I'm never bored and it never tastes bad. So yeah, at the end of the day, this is an excellent whiskey and really I'm just nitpicking about the balance and the intensity, but honestly, they do kind of nag at me, especially that intensity because this is a 46% whiskey. That's what I'm always asking for. I've got it here and this whiskey still tastes light. Not only that, our finish is pretty short and disappointing. Anyway, I don't want to dwell on that. I don't want to come down too hard on this whiskey. I like it, and I also think it's a whiskey that people should try. Now, Anok, and Anok 18 in particular, has a lot of very vocal fans out there, and I do see why. And I'm sure a lot of people out there are going to find this stuff a lot more cohesive than I do. Ultimately, I do like this whiskey a lot, despite having some flaws. So I'm going to give it a good score. I'm going to give this one an 87, and I'm going to recommend it to you guys. I think it's a fantastic whiskey. It's a fascinating whiskey, even on the nights where I'm not really vibing with it. Um, intensity issues, yes, balance issues, yes, but it's great stuff. Also, this is the kind of whiskey that I want to support. You know, most 18 year olds don't bother giving us a craft presentation, especially the ones in this one's price bracket. So, you know, we've got an age statement, we've got a nice sherry touch, we've got some interesting flavors, we've got some layers to this. There's a lot of cool elements here, and that alone is good enough reason to buy it, not to mention its great value. Yeah, I think this is really well priced for an 18 year old where I live. This is one of the cheaper 18 year olds on the market. Uh, similarly priced 18 year olds here tend to come in at 40 or 43% ABV. As I said earlier, we've got a 46% ABV on this one. So it's what we call an integrity malt with a nice age statement at a reasonable price. Not only that, it's delicious and rarely do all of those elements come together in the world of whiskey. So take advantage of it. Buy this stuff, support this kind of presentation, and in doing so, you do get to enjoy a very interesting and dynamic whiskey. All right, that's gonna be it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. As always, hit subscribe down below, click that little bell icon, and smash the like. Now, I do wanna hear from you guys. Have you tried our Anok 18 here? What were your thoughts on it? And finally, down in the comments, let me know what you wanna see me review next, and I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.